And welcome back to another episode of Ask the Network Engineer, where I will answer one of your questions. And before we get started, I want to make a very proud announcement that happened to me officially on January 24th of this year. I have reached my 15th year as a CCIE. So basically, on January 24th, 2001, I got my CCIE. And when you are certified for, for 10 years, Cisco will give you a plaque, which looks something like this. Congratulations. Um, Cisco doesn't give you a plaque for 15 or 20 years, at least as of now. Um, it could change maybe for 20 or 25 years. But I just want to share with you guys that particular milestone that I finally reached. 15 years seems like it went by forever, but I'm very, very proud about that because I worked really hard and I saw the benefits that when I got my CCIE, my life my life changed. And I think that's why I keep telling you guys, you know, get that certification. If you want to be a network engineer, invest in the time to study, to prepare, and to aim for that high level certification. Everybody that I talked to who got their CCIE, it's a very, very proud moment. And it is a very proud moment. It's very good for careers. I tell you, it's really, really a very, very big thing. But I also have said in many of these particular episodes that you also want to try to get the experience that's important as well, the experience while you are pursuing your certification. So I've talked a lot about that in other episodes, so check that out. But I just want to share with you guys on basically that milestone that I reached last month on January 24th. So let's go ahead and get started with this particular episode. Okay, so in this episode, I want to continue our conversation about software-defined networking. So I still get a lot of great questions from you guys about SDN, but more about is it going to kill getting a CCIE? So why should I even pursue a CCIE if software-defined networking is going to be something that's very, very big? So that's a lot of concerns about that. So I thought it was perfect timing to really continue this conversation about SDN and what will realistically happen. So let's continue our conversation about this. Okay, so let's talk about SDN and certifications. So let's say that five years from now, SDN will become something that's very, very popular and used with networking. Well, keep in mind that anything that is the trending technology it will eventually end up in the mainstream of what Cisco is doing. And with their certifications, I guarantee you that there will be CCNA, CCMP, and CCIE level certification towards SDN. Cisco has released a lot of different versions of their CCIE program, for example. And I provided like the list here in this little um, screenshot. These are the different CCIE certifications that Cisco has had over the years. Some of these include WAN switching, ISP dial, SNA IP integration. Many of these do not exist anymore. So the point is, is that when the SDN program becomes really part of Cisco, then there'll be certification towards it. And that means there'll be training material that you get to prepare for and to study for. There'll be labs. So the point is the training will be there that will get you ready to take on SDN for a network. Don't think that if when SDN is part of the network that you're on your own. That is not true at all. Cisco has always been following the trends for a long time and it is part of their certification. Now the thing that I'm not sure about is if it will be part of their data center track because SDN is more discussed with the data center networks. It's not really talked about when we talk about LAN campuses, things like that. There's conversations about software-defined WANs, but that's very brief conversations. SDN is heavily talked about with data center networks where the cloud network exists. So again, not really with the campus and internet edge, firewalls, VPNs, no, one, no one's talking about that. SDN is more about controlling a group of switches where the control plane functions are pushed up to a controller. 
So that's why when SDN does get flushed out and more polished, that it may be just part of like version four, version five of the data center track for CCIE. But regardless of that, it will be a certification focus that you can take advantage of for studying and pursuing as a certification. And that leads us to probably your biggest question, or actually probably two biggest questions, really. The first one is, what is going to be the future as a network engineer? So again, I've been a network engineer for almost 20 years, and everything has been pretty much pretty static, which means I learn about the new concepts, techno technologies, and I learn how to configure them. Right, new features, new protocols come out. You learn how to deploy them and you keep learning. And before you know it, you're 10, 15, 20 years in. That hasn't changed at all. But things are changing. And right now, there is no firm confirmation of how SCN will eventually, what, what it will look like at the end. Like five years from now, for example. So if something does happen five or 10 years from now, maybe it's not SDN. A lot of network engineers really say that it probably won't be SDN, but it'll be some type of um, evolution of SDN that will eventually become more mainstream. Because I do see from a logical perspective, let's have a GUI interface that can manage an entire network. That actually sounds pretty um, interesting and it makes a lot of sense. I shouldn't have to log on to this switch to do this configuration or this router to do that configuration. It doesn't make logical sense. So I do see from a technical perspective that it does make sense that SDN is moving in that direction. And believe it or not, this is basically part of what we call unified, right? Everything is becoming more unified. It's been happening like that honestly, since voice over IP. Because before, remember, you had a separate voice network and you had your network. All of a sudden, they were basically converged. So we have voice over IP. We have IP phones and a phone system. All right, that is a, that is a revolutionary change. Unification also happened with the storage and data center network, where I can take storage and data and basically converge them together onto the same fabric. Basically, fabric channel over ethernet. So that also has a convergence component to it or a unified component. Well, what about the unified computing system or Cisco UCS, which is basically like this big server farm and you can partition that this is gonna be one server that have this much CPU and memory and this will have this kind of CPU and memory. I can basically just make virtual servers on a whim from a pool of resources that I have available to me. I can even go further back and just say virtual machines that before we had one physical server meant one server. Now I can have one physical server have like running maybe five virtual servers on that physical server. So everything is getting to the point of being consolidated. And for networking, it still continues, right? We have, we can virtualize. There's MPLS, there's um, VRF Lite, or Easy um, Virtual Network, or EBN. Everything is turning into that kind of system. So it's just a matter of time where the network will be seen as one big logical blob that has routers and switches and firewalls that is managed from a central location. So I want you to kind of see why that makes sense to kind of it to fall or to move in that direction. So I personally believe that the future as a network engineer is going to involve two components that will merge together, that will basically reinvent what the next generation network engineer will be, okay? The first component is being a network engineer. That is still important, I'll tell you why, okay? This is really important. But the second component is with software development not super hardcore software development, software development that is relevant for an, as a network engineer. And these two components are going to basically merge or unify together 
So the future of the network engineer will eventually become a network developer, which is basically a network engineer with software development experience. So I know what some of you are probably thinking. You're thinking, oh no, I gotta do programming. Maybe this is not the right field for me. But networking with doing command line interface stuff and um, programming is not that different, to be honest with you. Remember what I said in a earlier episode that I talked about that when I was a network engineer many years ago, early on, I did programming. Um, the languages was, um, I did Perl, I did Expect, which is a TCO based uh, programming language. I did CGI, uh, more because of the web interface component of that. And I enjoyed doing it though. I just stopped doing it because I didn't need to do that for my profession. But I still do programming on the side. And I'll talk about that for what you guys need to do for learning and being prepared for the future. But just keep in mind that if you have experience with Cisco CLI and configuring routers and switches, it's not gonna be so much of a learning curve when you get to the programming side. Because again, configuration is really a series of steps that you need to configure things in the right order to get a particular function to work. Well, same thing for programming. It's particular lines of code that's gonna execute and it must be in the correct syntax and the right kind of structure to accomplish a particular task. So that's something just um, to take away from that, that it is not gonna be a drastic learning curve. So the question is, what do you need to learn about being a next generation network engineer or a network developer, as I'm calling it. Well, here, here it is. Keep in mind that in the IT field, whether it's working with desktop, servers, networking, it is a learning experience. You're always learning, learning about new technologies, new trends, and being up to date. Because if not, you will be out of date. So keep that in mind. So number one, what you need to do is you need to continue doing your network training. You're learning your experience. So you're getting your CCNA, your CCMP, CCIE, other specialties. You're learning about the technologies, the fundamentals. You're learning how to configure these networks for routing and switching, data center, security, wireless, unified communications, and so forth, storage. You want to continue that because that's important as a network developer. But the other thing that you also want to start gradually gaining experience with, start doing it also on your free time, is start to get experience with software development or programming to be more specific. Now, there are a lot of programming languages out there. There's PHP, there's Python, so forth. And focus on the language that many network engineers love and focus on the most, and that is Python. Python is very popular among network engineers. It is very easy to learn. It's very, what I call common sense and very logical. The resources for that is just wonderful out there. And keep in mind that learning one language and learning another language is not that different. It's just a matter of what the syntax is. So like in programming, there is what we call conditions, like if this happens or else or uh, LF statements. It's the same thing for whether it's iOS development, PHP, Perl, it's the same stuff. Just the syntax is different. It's like when you configure a router and you're adding a Cisco static route. Well, I can add a static route on a Juniper um, device or a Palo Alto, Palo Alto Networks device or a FortiGate device. Different syntax, but it still accomplishes the same thing of a static route. So just see that in terms of programming. So Python is something that you guys should start to gradually start to learn. And there are a lot of great resources and training, I guess, channels on YouTube to get you exposure to doing um, Python. And it's pretty easy. It actually, it's a lot of fun to learn Python. And the last point that I do want to make is in regards to uh, an episode that I did call uh, what you should do when you are a 10 plus year network engineer. And I talked about that when you reach like 10 years, you want to focus on learning about other products, 
like F5 or Citrix or Riverbed, Palo Alto Network Firewalls. You want to focus with that if you specialize really with Cisco. Now, there's nothing wrong if you want to get other certifications as a personal achievement. Go for it if that's something that you really, really want to do. But I just gave you my recommendation of pursuing other network solutions and learning about them. But that also includes new things like software development. So if you are 10 years in as a network engineer and you don't have exposure to networking, start taking that more seriously and getting that exposure, right? Just make programs of how you can make your job easier for doing backups or other kind of tasks. Do that. It makes it more relevant and easier to actually learn the actual um, content. And basically, that's what I'm doing. I'm still doing, I still learn about new technologies, new hardware, um, new configurations. I, so I keep up with the trends very, very consistently though, because that's important to be up to date. So I still do that as a network engineer, but I also do software development that I mentioned. So I do iOS um, development. Um, I also do Python development. I actually um, created a SDN product for managing a network. And I actually uh, made that for how I manage the networks for my clients, right from a graphical web interface. And I'm trying to basically get it to a point where I can put it on like uh, Raspberry Pi with um, Python. And I got some API stuff that I'm working on, uh, REST APIs to be exact. So these are things that I'm working on because again, I say, that I do these things because it's important for my career, but this is also a hobby for me. So it's kind of hard for me to explain that though, because I, I enjoy this stuff. For example, one night I was up until like nine o'clock in the morning because I was doing some programming stuff because that was really, really fun. <laughs> Again, I'm a nerd. So, so that's the kind of stuff that I just want to give you guys for considering your future as a network engineer and um, what to consider about where SDN fits into that model and where certifications and SDN fit into that model. And that is, um, SDN is not gonna kill a certification. Is this gonna be a new addition to the certifications that's gonna give you the training that you can learn and basically master. But I'm also giving you a kind of foresight of uh, basically what you can start being prepared for now. That is continue with your networking, but also doing programming. So when SDN or some version of SDN becomes a reality in the future, you would have many years of knowing how to do programming and networking, and it will make you a very, very strong asset for what's going to happen in the future. And we are done with this episode. So if you guys have any more other questions about SDN, post them below in the comments and we will continue our conversation about SDN or being a network developer as I am calling it. But as always, I wanna hear from the rest of you guys about questions about being a network engineer, network developer, or anything in the networking field. And your question will come up in a future episode. So please subscribe to our channel, that means a lot. And also check out our practical training on our website that we have available video training, a lot of great stuff, and it will support us as well and what we're doing. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time. And also, start programming, okay?